Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to do a video on grape pruning. Now I have done a previous video on how to grow grapes and I will link that above. So you can watch that if you would like. Grapes are very easy to grow. They don't have a lot of water requirements. They don't have a lot of nutrient requirements. One thing that they do need is regular pruning. Um, now grapes need pruning, number one, because they grow so vigorously and they can take over everything. And then number two is they only produce their fruit on the newer wood. So if you have an old grape that's completely outgrown its area, then it's producing fruit on the outside edges of the plant. If you keep it pruned back every year up to 90%, you prune 90% of the new growth off, you will have fruit that produces right next to the vine. Then you'll be able to keep it under control. So let's look at my grape vines and let's talk to you a little bit about the different ways of pruning grapes. So as we walk along here, you can see that each one of my grapes has four what I call arms. Another name for them are cordons that come off of the main trunk. And then off of these arms, we have a lot of branching coming off of them. So this is, these are the branches that bore fruit last year. And in the fall, I pruned these back a little bit so that they were not in my way I, when I was cleaning up the garden. So they were spread out all over. Grapes can be pruned any time of year. You can cut back uh, vines that are in the way. The best time to shape them is right now, and this is mid-April. Uh, I am a little bit later than I normally am, but you know, between the end of March, mid-April is a good time to do it. Now, on these older vines, what I want to achieve is I want all new growth so that we can have grapes right here next to the plant. And I will show you a little bit about how we're going to prune it. First, we need to talk a little bit more about the structure of grapevines. So this arm, or cordon, is attached to the trunk, which is the main structure of the plant. You know, I have the cordons attached to this wire so that, that, so that they're supported and can grow horizontally. Now this area right here is called a spur. This is where all the new growth happens. Now we have some dead spurs right here. The spur, we're not seeing any new growth. Everything's brittle. I will be taking this spur off a little bit later. We have a very healthy spur right here. You can see that it's growing, you know, it grew new vines last year and they're still healthy. So these are the vines that we're going to be using to produce new fruiting wood. Right here is a really old spur that is still really healthy. You know, it just keeps growing longer and longer and producing new vines. Now, when you do the spur pruning, you want to have these spurs, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how far you're supposed to have them, but I prefer to have them about a foot. So this one that's died, we'll be taking off. We'll take this one off. And uh, then we'll have a good distance apart for the fruit bearing wood. So um, the other thing that I will do is any new growth on the trunk, for example, this right here is coming off the trunk and I can do one of two things with it. I, can I could train this into be a new cordon and remove the old one, or I can cut this off at the trunk, but I'm not gonna let it compete with the cordons that I have if I don't need a new one. Now this cordon, let's see how healthy it is and see if it needs to be replaced. It's really old, but it's got a healthy spur here, this spur is getting older, but it's still producing. We've got a dead spur there, healthy spur here, and then a ton of healthy spurs that need to be thinned out at this end. Let's see how long this new vine is and see if I ruined it by cutting. Yeah, I, I cut this vine last year, so it is a little too short to make a new cordon. 
I prefer to have my cordons be 10 feet wide with the entire vine 20 feet wide. And I try to keep it all within those bounds. So let's look at a newer vine and show you how we get to this point and then we'll show you how I pruned the cordons. Okay, this right here is my newest vine. It's about three years old and it is a, a Concord grape. I did have I did have another Concord grape that had died. So what I did last year is I chose, you know, I, I let it just grow wild. So you can see the trunk right here. It doesn't matter if it curves at the bottom or not, but I let it grow up and I chose one branch to be the main branch. And we have that right here. What I tried to do last year is to get some good growth, you know, good side branches that I could use for the cordons. Okay, these lower branches are gonna come off because they're not what I want. But this branch right here, this one right here, you can kind of see the length of this branch. This right here, and it's attached to two different wires. Let's unattach it. Okay, now that I've fixed that, this branch right here is what I'm looking for for a cordon. Now, none of the other branches were long enough or strong enough to make good cordons. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to start over this year. I'll probably leave this long branch so that I can get some fruit. And then I'm going to cut everything else off and so you can see what a second year pruning would look like. So let's get going and do that for you. So now before I start, just to kind of recap, the first year, let your grapes grow just whatever way they would like. You're looking for long, thick branches so that you can choose the main trunk. And let's pretend this was the first year because I'm going to treat it kind of like the first year and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to cut off everything and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. So I finished pruning this. Let's get you closer in so you can see exactly what I did. So as you can see, I left that long cordon so I can get new growth. And I've started to create spurs. They were too long. You know, the next bud was way out here, so I just left one bud on each spur. So there's one healthy bud on each spur. There's two on this one. And then the uh, ones on the end will, co will continue to grow spurs. So that's going to give me my fruit for this next coming year. For the rest of it, if you look starting at the bottom and all the way up, there are no more branches left. Okay, so I finished this vine. Let's get you a little closer and show you what it looks like now that I'm done. So as you can see, those arms or cordons, and you can see the actual length of each one. Now, this vine, as I said, it's a candice, and it has not been as vigorous as my other vines. I have not been able to grow anything for as a replacement cordon. And let's look at these cordons and see what's going on with them. These right here are the last healthy buds on this cordon, and the rest of this is dead. I'll probably cut that off in a little bit. On this vine, all, on this cordon, all of this is dead all the way to this, all the way to this spur. There's only one, two healthy spurs really left. This one really needs to be replaced. Actually, maybe there's a third healthy spur right there. This one, my landscape crew, when I had my own landscape company, came in and cut it in half on accident because they weren't paying attention to what they were doing. So that one, I would like to have a replacement for that one. 
And then this one, this cordon, has healthy spurs all the way to the end. So my thoughts on this is what I may do next year. If I can't get any healthy growth off of this plant next year, I left this branch right back here and I left this branch to see if we can grow some healthy spurs. But up at the, near the bottom, there was nothing. There still is no growth down here near the bottom. So we would only, even if those grew healthy branches um, or healthy vines, we would only get two cordons off of that. So what I'm thinking about doing is possibly next year cutting the entire vine back to here, back to here, and then cutting these cordons off completely. Now that seems pretty drastic, but what that's going to do is spur new growth. In reality, I could take this entire grapevine to the ground and it would sprout back up and I could start over from the beginning. So grapevines are very forgiving. Um, this is about 90% of the growth off. As I said, I had pruned it in the fall to cut off anything you know, that was you know, in the way that was going through the fence or in the way of the gardens. And I pruned them back during the summer also to keep access to the gardens. Now I've finished this vine and I want to show you what it looks like once I was done. So as you can see, I left a little bit at the end. We've got two buds on each of our spurs. We've removed the dead spurs, left the live ones. And then I wanted to show you a little bit what I did here. As you can see, well actually, let me show you out something really interesting. I don't know if you can see, but this branch is weeping pretty badly. Now grapes will do that this time of year. I am, if you prune them earlier, like in March, they won't weep, but it can force them to bud out a little bit earlier. As you can see, the buds that I have here are not very mature, and they should weather the um, cold that we're gonna get here tonight pretty well. Now, if they were open a little bit further, I have had years where they have frozen back, but if they froze, if the leaves freeze and die, then they will re-sprout again and it's usually fine. It's just if it happens year after year that it's a problem. But anyway, you can see this large wound that I made. I decided to replace this cordon because I found another vine that would do a really good job as a new cordon. It had one branch that I could use as a spur, but all of the rest of them, the buds will come out from these nodes and create new spurs. So, so here's what it looks like in total finished. Trunk cleaned off, spurs done, and so that I can replace this old cordon, I have left a larger spur in the back with some good buds on it. Hopefully that'll grow a big enough bud that I can replace this old cordon next year. Now this is the last vine I wanted to show you. All of the cordons have been replaced in the last couple of years. This is the newest one that's been replaced. And it's actually come from a really good spot. This is really what you want to look like it to look like when you replace a cordon. This is coming out of the trunk rather than out of a spur. Just like this one over here. So anyway, we've got this all replaced. I may cut off the top here because this is no longer needed. Everything is branching out from down below. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have old grapevines, new grapevines, any other type of grapevines, they are easy to prune. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. In the meantime, like and subscribe and go have a wonderful garden adventure.